So this is the November 2021 edition of what I've been writing with lately. This is the series in which I talk about the pens and pencils that I've been using lately. These aren't recommendations or reviews. They're just the pens and pencils that have been on my desk this month. So we'll jump right into it in no particular order. So first up is this. It's a Platinum Preppy Special Edition. They had these uh, sort of Japanese-inspired patterns on some Platinum Preppies. I, uh, I frankly couldn't resist buying some, and this was my favorite of the patterns. It's kind of a, a green, clearly the, pre- the Platinum Preppy Crystal body, but in green with some kind of wave-type printing on it. Uh, just the standard... 0.3 millimeter, so it's the extra fine version. I usually use this in the medium, but I upgraded to the or changed it over to the extra fine. It costs a little bit more, which is why I was going to say upgrade. I was using the Platinum Preppy fountain pen a whole lot, maybe two years ago, two and a half years ago, something like that. And I kind of burnt myself out on them. Haven't really used them too much. Then when I bought this special edition a few months ago, I uh, sort of delayed using it and I just picked it back up. So Platinum Preppy in the Extra Fine. A lot of fun. Here is another pen I've revisited and one I've used a lot. This is a Pilot High Tech Point. In this case, it's a 0.5 millimeter in black. I usually go a little bit wider with these, but this is a really nice needle needle point or needle tip, whatever you want to call it, rollerball, liquid rollerball. This is uh, very cool because it's refillable. It uses a pilot style refill. So uh, when this is out, you can put ink in it instead of throwing the whole pen out the way a lot of roller balls are. And it has a very cool flat color that I really like. Very clean design. And this is an ink window. So you can know this pen is relatively new. I haven't really used it much. So it's the high tech point 0.5, just one of, if not my favorite rollerballs, although I typically go with the 0.7. There's, they also have a, uh, that's the V7 is the 0.7. They also have a V10, but they don't sell the high tech point cartridge in a V10. So uh, again, typically go with the V7. Here's a new one. This is called the uh, Penco something. I forgot what it is. Penco portable pen or pocket pen or something like that. And it's a tiny little pocket style pen in this kind of cool color. Uh, sells for about six or seven dollars, as you can see there. Oh, they call it the Bullet Ballpoint Light. So there you go. Penco Perfection. Penco is just the name of the company. I don't think Perfection is the model or anything like that. And it's just a tiny little ballpoint that, just like the Caveco or the Space Pen, you know, the Fisher Space Pen Bullet, it will uh, go into itself there. Very pocketable. And you can clip it this way. You could post it to make for uh, nearly a full-size pen. This one is a pretty standard ballpoint. It has this little convertible D1 refill in here. So here you have a basically a D1 refill. And then here you have a sort of a holder for the refill. So it lets you use a, I guess, a non-standard size pen with a standard refill. And D1 is not my favorite refill size, but there's enough variety that you can find some pretty good D1 refills. I don't love this pen. This like little, uh, these little shoulders here are kind of sharp and it makes it me not want to put it in my pocket. Same with over here. And uh, just like there's better pocket pens out there for me. It reminds me a lot of this pen, which is the Fisher Space Pen, which I actually very much prefer, even though the Penco is a little bit more comfortable. It's very lightweight, so it kind of feels cheap, even though it's like a 6 or $7 pen. We'll do all the writing at the end. This is the Hauser XO. I bought maybe a 20 or 30 pack of these, 24 packs, something like that, a few months ago. And uh, i just been using them a lot. I kind of threw them any, any place I needed a pen, and I didn't want to think about it. Like every room, the, every room I go to has at least one of these somewhere. So I find myself writing all sorts of lists with them. 
It's a nice, smooth ink, kind of like a Jetstream style ink. Not quite as good, but way better than it needs to be. And a little needle tip. These are cheap, very pocketable, nice. I think it's pretty cool looking pen. Smooth edges, so I don't have any problem throwing it into a pocket. And uh, yeah, cheap enough that you could always have one nearby. So that's the Hauser XO. Uh, if you want an affordable pen, I've been really liking these. So this is a Faber-Castell Perfect Pencil. This one hasn't been sharpened yet, so I wanted to keep the original length because they're, <laughs> I didn't realize they were so short when I bought them, but I bought maybe a six or 10 pack, I'd say a six pack off of eBay just because I wanted to try these pencils out. I'd heard a lot about the, you know, the Graf von Faber-Castell or the Faber-Castell Perfect Pencil. I had never used them before, so I picked up a pack of them and you know, they're, they're fine. I don't really have too many strong opinions about them one way or another yet. They seem totally sufficient, but somewhat bland. I, I don't use them and think this is the perfect pencil I use. I think it's like, oh, this is a high quality, totally acceptable pencil. You know, it looks nice, maybe a little bit boring, and really not too much else to say about it. Again, here is it relative to a standard Musgrave pencil. So you're getting this very short pencil. And I think there's probably a reason for that. Faber-Castell sells a pencil extender, and maybe that goes on it. And between the pencil extender and the short pencil, you have a full-size pencil. I'm not really sure. It's just a bunch of short pencils showed up at my doorstep, so I was a little bit surprised. This is the Lamy 2000 fountain pen. I had one of these a few years ago, maybe three, four years ago, and I got rid of it because I just wasn't using it a lot. And then I've been thinking over the past couple of months, like, man, I, I shouldn't have sold that Lamy 2000 fountain pen. I really do miss it. Uh, so I, I got a really good deal on another one used. And uh, I don't know, I've been using it a lot. Before I had the medium, which was a little bit too wet for me, this is the fine, which uh, I think writes really nicely. So it writes the way you would expect a medium to write. These Lamy 2000s for me, they write pretty uh, pretty wet. So I'm pretty happy with this fine, whereas the medium, it was fun, but it was just putting down uh, more ink than I wanted. So this is a fine. I bought it in really good shape. These things, when they sell used, they, they typically are in very good working order, but this one was really uh, almost new. So uh, I was really happy with it, and I got it for a great deal. So I've been using this one a whole lot, and uh, I've been liking it. The pen has some problems, as I pointed out in the past. You know, it has some kind of like clips a little sharp the it's like really you never know quite where to hold it because it's round and it's a little slippery and I don't know where to hold it up and down and the sweet spot isn't that big but even with those little quibbles it is still a very fun pen to use and one I really like I've been using this pen a whole lot this is a Rotring Jazz this is one of my favorite uh, cartridge, uh, bit, not cartridge rolls, roll, rollerball, but my favorite rollerballs. It has a full size refill, which I really like. And that's a, like a Schmidt. This is a, uh, I want to say an eight one, yeah, eight one two seven. So it's a full size Schmidt refill, which is very cool. You don't see a lot of pens that use it. Has these little kind of cut out windows in the grip. And it has a push button, obviously retractable system. And you can push this to get the tip back inside. Uh, these are a really great vintage pen from Rotring. I think they tr primarily sold around the early 90s. They haven't aged well. What happens is this clip wears out. Was This clip is actually pressed down. And there's a little tooth on the clip right here that holds the button in. That wears out over time. So basically, basically the, pen, the pen won't stay extended. Like basically this won't hold. So it's essentially what's happening is this where it just won't stay. This is like really hard to demonstrate on camera. But basically you have a situation like this. And the, uh, with the little tooth here 
which marries with a little piece of plastic on the inside, those that combination wears out and there's really no good way to fix it. You can take this clip off, but you have to slide it up and it's a, a delicate procedure and there's a good chance you're going to break the pen. You could see that even uh, with this one, which was in really good condition, just like impressive condition. I'm already seeing some of the chrome flaking off of that steel there. And uh, that's like, as far as these pens go, that's the absolute minimum. Like that's nothing compared to the, uh, the button wearing out. So this one was in really good condition and the button mechanism, the push mecha mechanism is in near perfect working order. So I was really happy to find this one. I've been using it a lot. This is a Pentel PG Metal 350. I think this is a relatively new mechanical pencil from Pentel. It basically is kind of like the uh, the Pentel, like the Graph Gear 1000 or the Graph Gear 500. Similar pen. It's a 350, so it's a lower end one. Uh, very lightweight, plastic body, but it has the metal grip with sort of these raised little. Uh, little it looks like a pill shape but it's little uh raised pills and then the cutouts here and this is just a fine mechanical pencil i think this is a relatively new model maybe from earlier in the year something like that and uh, i've been pretty happy with it no complaints but it's nothing exceptional and actually I, I don't like the grip so if you're buying it because the grip looks cool i would say skip it and get something else lastly i've been using this a little bit this is a Pilot Razor Point, so very retro felt tip Pilot uh, pen marker, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I remember having these like way back in the day, and I never really thought too much about them. But I was on some sort of stationery store website, I forget which one, and I saw one of these for like three, four bucks, maybe even less, maybe two dollars, and I just I picked it up. It's just very cool and retro, and it's been a lot of fun to use this. So that pretty much covers it. Pretty interesting month, but nothing too, too exceptional to, uh, to write home about. Nothing to write home about, I guess. And do a couple quick writing samples right now in case anyone's interested. So first up, we have the marker uh, felt tip. This is the Pilot, the Razor point. This is like one of those felt tip pens that writes like a marker. You know, for me, it's like a, kind of like a micron. And, you know, if you use it too much on one end, it always kind of wears out. So you have to be careful with the felt tip. And keep going. This is that preppy in the extra fine, which is the 0 0.3 millimeter. It's really the extra fine. This is a pen we've used many times on this channel. This is the Pilot High Tech Point, and it's the V5. Uh, the Penco with the standard ballpoint refill in it. It's kind of a skinny, you know, fine size ballpoint. Nothing fancy there. This is a, a refill that I would totally uh, ditch pretty soon and get an upgrade refill in there. This is the Hauser XO. Just a very standard, modern style ballpoint. Feels kind of like lubricated, nice dark coloring in that blue. It's not not jet stream quality, but it's better than it needs to be. And uh, a nice, reliable writer. Not too much here. This is just a Pentel with the 0.5 millimeter. I forgot what lead I have in here, but uh, I don't think I still have the stock lead in there anymore so not maybe the truest 
representation of this. It's not called a graph gear. It's the PG metal. P G metal 350. And here is the perfect pencil. So this one's, I don't think they say what its hardness level is, if it's HB or what, but it is on the hard side. So it's more of a, like a uh, 2H to me. I haven't really dug into it scientifically, but it's definitely on the harder side and harder than I would consider a perfect pencil to be. And now we have, so this is the Rotring Jazz with an 8127, which is a 0.7 millimeter rollerball refill in it. That's a, that's a big, wide, wet rollerball. Definitely not as wide as the 8120, which is the 1.0 millimeter, but it's a nice, generous writer. Nice refill, great pen, very cool, old school, full size rollerball. And then we have the Lama 2000, which I already wrote with, and I'll probably do some more videos on in the future. So just a quick look at the pens and pencils I've been using this month. If you have any questions, please leave them below or any suggestions. I really do take those seriously. So thanks for watching.